Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to DENFCONF. And uh, our next session is presented by David, Andre, and Jakub uh, with the topic Promote Streams to, to Production Level with Arga and Tecton. Uh, guys, stage is all yours. OK, thank you. So hello, everyone, and welcome. I think we can move to the next slide. So at first, I'd like to uh, introduce me and uh, my colleagues. My name is Jakub Steskal, and with me there is uh, Andre Babets and David Cornell. We are all working in uh, Red Hat as quality engineers, and uh, we mostly take care about quality of uh, several different projects. And uh, we also prepared an um, initiative called TELC, which we want to present it to you today. And uh, this, uh, this initiative basically put together several projects which uh, we are working uh, on in, uh, in our work. OK, let's go through a presentation timeline. At first, we want to uh, introduce uh, more closely the TELC project. Uh, if you wonder why we call it TELC, we are just basically uh, fans of the Stargate. So <laughs> that's the reason why we picked that name. Uh, the, the second uh, uh, the, the other point will be about Argo and Tecton, why we choose those uh, technologies in our project and uh, for what exactly we are using it. And uh, the last part of the theoretical part of this presentation will be about uh, Strimzy, what is Strimzy and why we choose Strimzy in our project. Uh, the second part of the presentation will be mostly uh, focused on several demonstrations. We want to show you how we deploy TL project and uh, how we basically use it. And uh, after that, we will show you how, uh, how we use Argo CD and how Argo CD sync uh, our applications. And the last part will be about uh, Tecton operations, which we used uh, in project as well. And then, uh, and then we do some, uh, some short summary. Also, you can, you can see the QR code on the right down corner. You can, uh, you can scan it and you can join our Telegram group. And if we will be lucky, and there will be some uh, tweet about uh, DevCon on Red Hat in the following 40 or 50 minutes, you will be able to show, see it in the, uh, in the chat group because it's basically uh, kind of our reload which we use in Telk. Uh, okay, that's uh, from me. So uh, I hand over to David. Okay, so uh, what is a Telk project? Uh, TELC is a code name of our project, and as Jakub said, is also a character from Stargate series. Uh, it's a, it is a collection of uh, of tools and deployments for running continuous testing of provided scenarios of Kubernetes applications. Uh, we created it mainly for continuous testing of automated upgrades of running application with some load and configuration. We wanted to simulate customer-like deployment on Kubernetes cluster and see uh, how application behaves after a few days of continuous running and upgrades. We use uh, modern tools like uh, Argo CD, Tecton, Ansible, and for monitoring Prometheus with Allen Manager and Grafana. Uh, it also periodically runs test suite uh, against software under test uh, using Tecton pipeline. Deployment of application under test is stored in Git repository, and it is synced by Argo CD, uh, and alerts are sent to our mailbox. Our reference application for system under test is a Streamsy Kafka operator. So let's move to the overall architecture of project. You can see we use right now two OpenShift clusters. The first one is called Infra Cluster, and this cluster is mainly supposed to run our uh, control application like Argo CD, Tecton, and monitoring of Argo, Argo CD applications. On the right side, we have a worker cluster, which is the cluster uh, supposed to run uh, our application under test, uh, which is Streamzy Kafka operator with Kafka cluster, some Kimo Kafka connector, and of course monitoring 
for uh, StreamZ and Kafka application. Uh, you can see that we use uh, for our referral scenario, we use uh, Twitter as source of data and Telegram for resending some interesting topics which we get from the Twitter. Uh, on the top, we have a tail repo. Uh, it is just for storing our Ansible and Ansible playbooks for installing the infrastructure, configuring Argo and Tecton and, and so on. And um, on the right side, the Soka repo, uh, which is a source of truth, uh, and it's it's a collection of our uh, deployments and configuration for StreamZ, Kafka cluster, game connectors, and so on. Uh, this uh, repo is periodically synced by Argo CD into the worker cluster, so we are sure that configuration which is stored in Socar is always deployed into the worker cluster. And if someone changed the configuration on us on the cluster side, uh, Argo again sync the source of truth uh, into the worker cluster. We also use a stream repo uh, and we use that for pulling the the new configuration and new features, new CRD definitions and so on. And every time guys from uh, StreamZ uh, create the new images and they push it into the Kwai, uh, Tecton is notified by this change and it runs uh, one of the Tecton pipeline which get all these images and update the, in, uh, the, update the configuration files in the SOCAR and then SOCAR and then Argo push this SOCAR uh, pull this SOCAR uh, configuration and do the upgrade on the worker cluster. So that's about the architecture. Uh, you will of course see the live demo, how it really works. So let's briefly describe what is Argo CD and what is a Tecton. From definition, Argo CD is a declarative GitOps continuous delivery tool for Kubernetes. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that your Git repository contain, contains a source of true uh, for defining the desired application state. For example, uh, we have a Git repository with the YAML deployment files of Kubernetes application and Argo CD allow us to deploy these files on a Kubernetes cluster and sync changes from Git repository. Uh, yeah. It works also as a guard of our deployed application in case when uh, someone uh, someone update a uh, configuration worker cluster and Argo uh, again resync the, these changes and do the uh, you know, do the fix on the on the worker cluster. Argo CD provides also a very nice way how to monitor state of deployed applications uh, via, for example, web UI. And what is a Tecton? Uh, from definition, Tecton is a cloud native solution for uh, building CI CD pipelines. Uh, Tecton behaves uh, like a extension on Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it installs CRDs like a pipeline, task, trigger, pipeline run, task run, and so on. Uh, these uh, resources, these resources define uh, the building blocks. Uh, you can create and reuse these uh, these blocks in your pipelines, and you can create and modify and delete and run the pipelines also with kubectl CLI, uh, which is the same way like you work with, for example, other Kubernetes resources like a pods and so on. Uh, Tecton pipeline runs on Kubernetes cluster and it uh, contains tasks which are composed uh, from steps and every step uh, run uh, in own container in the same pod. For example, let's imagine a simple pipeline for a run uh, JUnit test. We know that we need a Git for clone repository with uh, test files. 
and to Maven for uh, trigger this test. So we create a tecton task with the two steps. The first one use a uh, git container just for clone the repository into the workspace, which is a shared uh, between all containers in the pod. And the second step uh, use Maven container for run uh, our tests from sources. Uh, this is an awesome feature because we don't need to build and build a really large container image with all our tools which we need for testing, like a make, Maven, Git, and so on. And we just uh, use a small container images just for a specific task. And I hand over to Jakub, and he will describe what is Streamsy. OK, so Strimzy is a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, Strimzy itself basically is a collection of operators which allow users to deploy and manage Apache Kafka on top of Kubernetes. Uh, we provide uh, Kubernetes experience, which means that uh, users can very easily define uh, its own Kafka uh, instance with custom resource and uh, the operator will do all necessary steps to deploy it in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we choose uh, Strimzy as a reference example in TL because it's a very nice and simple project and uh, all of us are working with it uh, closely, mostly on a daily basis, so that's, that's the main reason. We also use their um, in our deployment uh, Kafka Connect, and we decided to use the uh, KML Kafka connectors for uh, sourcing data from Twitter and sync them uh, to Telegram. On the right side, you can see a uh, simple architecture of Strimzy. Uh, the main part here is a cluster operator, which basically uh, manage uh, Kafka related resources based on the uh, custom resources defined by user, uh, introduce uh, resources we can count Kafka, Kafka Connect, uh, Kafka Mirror Maker, and uh, also, for example, Stand the Bridge. There is also uh, another two operators, which are dealing with the uh, user and topics of Kafka. Those operator operators are called uh, topic and user operator and are uh, directly connected to specific Kafka cluster. So each uh, Kafka cluster has uh, its own topic and user operator. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Kafka Connect and Kafka Camel connectors, you can see it uh, on the right side uh, of the diagram. Uh, we basically use uh, a source connector which is connected to, to a Twitter and searching for the specific tweets and then send it to Kafka and uh, another connector basically read uh, the data from uh, from Kafka and uh, push it to the Telegram. We have there are several applications which are uh, available in our uh, GitHub repository. It's, uh, it's open source. And uh, we basically just transformed the messages uh, from, uh, from Twitter to some more, uh, let's say, human readable format on Telegram to make it uh, more easily uh, Readable, basically. Um, if you are interested more in Strimzy, uh, my colleague Jakub Scholz uh, will have a presentation about Strimzy and um, how to set up uh, its own uh, data analysis tool later today. So if you are interested in, I definitely um, encourage you to join this session. And that's, that's basically about Strimzy, and I think we can uh, move to the demonstration part. Yeah. Uh, we will start with uh, the simple demo, oh, the, with the de demo of uh, simple deployment of uh, infrastructure part, which is Argo and Tecton on infrastructure cluster. So let me open the YouTube video. Uh, I'm sorry to break in. Is there any chance you can zoom it, please, a bit? I don't think so. OK. Uh, but anyway, uh, we don't need to, we don't need to check what is what is uh, on the top of this 
uh, of this video because it's just a run of uh, Ansible playbook. Uh, the more interesting part is here uh, where we will install the Argo and Tecton using uh, operators from operator catalog on OpenShift. Uh, of course, it will take some time, so I will jump through the video uh, because the more interesting part is, also of, of course, uh, synths of Argo and so on, which will be presented by Andre and Jakub later on. Uh, but anyway, uh, the full deployment is automated by Ansible playbook. Uh, this Ansible create uh, subscriptions uh, for Argo and Tecton pipelines and it also configures secrets which we need for uh, connecting to the worker cluster and so on. You can see that OpenShift uh, pipelines operator is installed which is a Tecton and it will in uh, we will shortly install the Tecton instance after a while. Seems that Tecton operator is installed, triggers controller as well. Then we install the OpenShift GitOps operator, uh, which is an Argo CD. Argo CD is starting. It should run so we can go to the web UI of Argo CD. We can log in using the OpenShift credential. And we can see empty uh, Argo CD UI because the projects are uh, not deployed yet. It will be due later on. And the last part uh, is a Grafana uh, for uh, monitoring of Argo, which is installed again by uh, from operator catalog. Grafana is deployed and let's skip it and go to the Grafana UI to see, see simple dashboard for Argo application, which will be of course empty because there is no application yet. So we have uh, prepared uh, the infrastructure cluster and Argo and Tecton. The next part is deployment of a uh, report portal. Report portal is a tool for storing and uh, visualizing uh, visualization uh, test data, uh, the test results from uh, our test suite. So. It's again installed from uh, uh, from operator catalog. So Ansible Playbook will again create a subscription and install the report portal. Report portal operator from catalog. It will take some time because uh, report portal needs to install a lot of uh, components. You can see that the repo portal instance is spinning. After a while, repo portal is up and running and we can open the web UI. Ah, we are in. And you can see the empty dashboard because, of course, we don't have any test result yet. Uh, but when the test, test suite start, it will be the all data will be there. So that's it. We have uh, our infrastructure installed, and I will hand over to Andre, and he will show you how Argo projects are deployed and how Tecton works. Okay. Let's share my screen.
Okay, so here is the first demo from me. And that is basically the deployment of the StreamZ infrastructure by Argo project. <clears throat> we can start it up. Uh, we can see that we are also <clears throat> again running Ansible playbook for the stream now for the streams infrastructure. And after the while, the after the everything is configured, Argo CD starts deploying the applications uh, for the streams. We can see there are already a couple of them, and more will come later. Just jump a little. Everything is uh, pulling the deployment files from the Soccer repository, which David already introduced. We can see that Streamzy cluster operator is already deployed, and now it's starting to run. Kafka is already starting up, but for the Kafka, it takes much more time to start up. So we can jump a little forward. We can see that all Persistent volume claims I have created, and now the Kafka is just rolling to the drawing. There we can see our pipeline runs, which are basically this is a Tecton dashboard, and these pipelines have been deployed together with StreamZ deployment. So it will surely take some time. These, these pipeline runs are basically for image update, which David already introduced in the architecture. They are basically just just pulling the images and changing the configuration in SoCar, so everything is up to date. Yeah, we can see all the ports for the pipeline runs are running currently. Kafka is starting the fifth. Now it's time to deploy the clients, which are basically rolling in the background. You can see one result of the completed pipeline here. OK, so <clears throat> currently everything except Kafka seems completely deployed, but that is not completely true because Kafka is not uh, deployed yet, so the external clients cannot connect to Kafka because there is no secret for them, there is no like uh, certificate, which we will see that some of the clients have the fail failure in the logs. Yeah, we can see it now. So in this part, Argo CD have the self-healing like uh, attribute, which basically can reload the deployments if there is some failure during the deployment and we can skip it to the part where we can actually see what is going on yeah we can see that now argo cd just take care of the broken consumers and producers because there was no uh, secret and after a while, Kafka is is deployed. Yeah, you can see it now. So secret is created, and everything is rolled out again, and seems healthy, seems working. You can see the logs. Yeah, the producer is starting, and after the while, yeah, we can see it's already firing messages to the Kafka. So everything is deployed since since now. Oh, that's basically everything for the Streamzy deployment demo. And we can move for the next part, which is probably more interesting too. And that is deployment of our Twitter application, which as Jakub already described, takes the uh, tweets from Twitter and later expose them to the Telegram. So now we can see it in like real time. So again, Ansible Playbook is run for the Twitter deployment, Twitter application deployment. After a while, we can see the Argo City applications deployed. Yeah, also for the Argo City applications, we have two pipelines. One is again for the update of the images, and second one is for creating the secrets and copying them from the Kafka and more 
more deployments to write the namespace. You can see we have all the Kafka, all the Twitter applications deployed and pipelines are running. For these applications in Argo are for like several parts. One is creating topics for the Kafka, the well, second connectors and other other stuff which you can find more deeply in our repository. We can move to the part. Yeah, we can see the parsers are running and starting. Skip to the part where we can actually see something. Okay, connector is still progressing. Yeah, now it seems running and we can see that on Telegram, Tailbot already is firing that new tweet it is uh, like synced from the from the Twitter. So everything seems working, everything is deployed. And that's basically for the Twitter Telegram scenario. And we can move to my last demo for you guys. And that is our automatic test suite, which is named Tor. And as David described, there is a report portal instance, which takes all the results. Our test suite is stored in separate repository, which is which is uh, just triggered by Tekton, or it's triggered basically on cron basis. But for our purpose, we will just trigger it manually, so we don't have to wait till cron trigger. You can see everything is uh, deployed by Ansible, or the pipelines and are created. Yeah, and we can see we have Tor test suite pipeline here, which sh should be triggered by, by cron, but we will trigger it manually, so we don't have to wait, as I said already. So we will just trigger it manually. So we have we have some we have some results. We can see the pipeline has already started. So there are, as David said, a couple of steps of cloning and, and so on. Now we can see that the tests are already running. Yeah. So the tests were finished. I have already just triggered a couple more test runs so we have we can see more the results in the report portal. And as all the test runs are completed, we can go to the report portal instance. And now the previous and empty dashboard is already fulfilled with the test results. We can see the results from last round, which were basically one number four. And if we go to the launches of the dashboard, we can see there are five test ones reported. Everything is stored in the report portal and everything seems to work. So this is basically how the long running tests will run. They will be triggered by Tekton and everything will be stored in the report portal. And that's everything from my demos. I would like to hand over to Jakub. Okay, so let me share the screen. Okay, so uh, let's just stop it and start again. Okay, uh, basically the whole TEL project is focused on testing. So we want to make sure that uh, in that case, Trimzy is working properly and we want to run, uh, let's say long, uh, long running tests. And uh, we want to see that uh, Trimzy is able to be operational even after, let's say one month of, uh, of some work. So one of the main part of this is uh, automatic upgrades, not just of Streams itself, but also of its component. And uh, this will be part of this uh, demo. Okay, you can see uh, Streams cluster operator up and running. So let's check um, the images which are used within uh, Streams cluster and its uh, Kafka deployment. 
You can see that uh, currently we use uh, version 0.27.1, which is the uh, latest release version of Stremzy. And we use this uh, in all uh, components which we have deployed. Uh, together with Stremzy operators, we also deployed uh, Kafka, which contains basically Kafka Zookeeper, uh, Entity Operator, Kafka Exporter, and Cruise Control. Now let's imagine that uh, some change happened in uh, in Stremzy and uh, new images were built, which basically triggered uh, the event from Quai, which was sent to our infrastructure cluster. And this event triggered our Stremzy deployment image update pipeline. This pipeline basically, uh, this pipeline basically uh, change the images which are stored in our Soka repository from uh, the latest version which was used to a new one. Um, you can see now in the pipeline that uh, pipeline self cloning, uh, cloning the Soka repository and also cloning a Strimzy Kafka operate repo from where we take new versions of CRDs, cluster roles, role bindings. Uh, config map for Streamzy and the deployment configuration itself. Um, you can also see that uh, it found some uh, uh, different digits. So the, the images will be updated in the configuration files. And uh, after that, the files will be pushed into our uh, repository from where Argo CD will, uh, will update it. Now let's check uh, the commit, which was pushed. Uh, you can see it was pushed by Telc CI, and uh, you can see that the floating tags were replaced by shady gest of the images, which were pushed into Quai, and which are basically the latest available in the streams organization. Uh, after that, uh, the Argo CD will pick up the changes and uh, should start the rolling update of uh, of Streamzy and Streamzy after that uh, should deal with the upgrade of Kafka and its component. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Argo react in a, in a few seconds, so in a few seconds we should be able to see uh, how uh, Streamzy cluster operator rolling update started, and this will basically just change the deployment file update the images and spin up a new pod. Okay, it's, it's already done and we can see that uh, floating or uh, floating tags were changed uh, to shard just uh, in the configuration. When the stems operator will came up, uh, it will start the rolling update of uh, Kafka cluster. You can see it's really happening. So now it will take some time to do a rolling update, not just uh, uh, Zookeeper cluster, but also a Kafka cluster and uh, all other components which are available here, which are Entity Operator, Chorus Control, and uh, Kafka Exporter. Uh, this will basically change all the images used within the cluster and uh, automatically will update uh, the images and the project version from previous one to the latest, which is available in uh, Kuwait. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, those steps are basically executed uh, with every push into main branch of Streamzy. So we are basically sure that in case there is something new in the images, uh, we pick up the changes and uh, working with the latest version of Streamzy. Now we can see here in the in the image part that uh, it used Shadi just so the update was. Uh, successful. Okay. Uh, basically, those techniques operations uh, are used not just for Streams itself, but it's used also for, for clients, for our Twitter app, and for uh, Streamsy drain cleaner and Streamsy canary, which we use in our deployments uh, in, in our project as well. Basically, we want to make sure that uh, everything is working. So we also implemented uh, the alert. So in case uh, 
rolling update is not working or uh, one of the components uh, is not able to came up, we will receive the notification uh, from Prometheus and uh, to be notified to email, but uh, in the future we want to make it more resilient to notify us, for example, on Telegram or on Slack. Okay, that's uh, that's all. So let's uh, go for a summary. Uh, okay, basically the, the main purpose of this project is to continue to test uh, upgrade process and of the application under the load. So we, uh, within the project, we make sure that uh, since this working, the, the Kafka uh, connect is working fine because uh, we are able to see the messages on telegram and in case anything uh, wrong happened we are notified very quickly and we can see what's what's wrong uh, in our project we use uh, zero touch upgrade which basically what i saw in the demo that uh, with every change push into Kuwait, the images uh, used within our project are automatically upgraded which makes us uh, sure that uh, we use always latest version and uh, let's say we are basically the first users of uh, of Stormz. We also have the day two testing, which showed on tray, which uh, basically periodically runs the tests and which are check that uh, our deployment is working, the messages are uh, available uh, in Kafka and uh, no messages were lost uh, during the upgrades and uh, all other operations. Those that are available in uh, report portal. So in case there are some, some issues, again, you can, you can check it in report portal and uh, you can also get, uh, can get the notification for report portal. So in case uh, uh, the parameter was, is not able to, uh, find the issue, the report portal and your test will usually do that. We also uh, have the metrics there, which are used by Prometheus and we also depicted them in, uh, in Grafana. So uh, we are able to check the metrics uh, uh, when, we, when we want. So we can check if uh, every, every, brokers, every broker is up and running uh how big load is uh, on them and and so on and uh, that's basically it uh, in the future we want to automatically uh, add uh, upgrade of uh, Kubernetes cluster so we will basically check if uh, if terms is operationable without issues during the upgrade of uh, of whole infra infrastructure which is uh, one of the big uh, big steps as well. That's that's all from me. And if uh, my colleagues don't want to add anything else, I thank you for your. Uh, I thank you that you attend. Thank you, Jakob, David, and Andre. Uh, we have a few more minutes. Uh, uh, let me ask the audience, uh, please, if you have any questions, can you post them in Q&A section? Uh, I have one little question for myself. Uh, if one uh, wants to contribute to your project, uh, how they can do it? Yes, uh, the project itself is uh, open source, it's available on GitHub. Uh, we have uh, all links uh, for what we use uh, in our project in our presentation. So I think uh, uh, the contributors can take a look uh, on the presentation and the end uh, they will find the links and uh, they will find also the, the project on GitHub and uh, yeah, they can contribute there. Also, they can reach us uh, via email or uh, on uh, on streams is like for example okay thank you and i see andre posted the link to the github repo thank you thank you guys uh, i don't see any questions in uh, q a section okay thank you okay thank you everyone
Thank you. Uh, the attendees, uh, per our schedule, we're having a long break now. See you later. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye.